to order the meeting of the Parks and Recreation Commission for November 15th. If you'll rise and join me for the pledge. Roll call, please, Ms. Navaris. Chair Longstreet. Here. Vice Chair Clark. Commissioner Cavazos. Commissioner Lesnar Buxton. Here. Commissioner Martinez Cohen. Here. Commissioner Armbruster. Commissioner Perry. Here. Okay. Um, we are going to uh, jump around a little bit on this agenda today because we got a bit of a late start. So. Um, we are going to move directly to public comment and any member of the public may address the commission for up to two minutes on any subject within the jurisdiction of the commission that is not scheduled for public discussion before the commission and seeing no one we will close public comment and that brings us to our youth council report welcome back Um, I have a just brief report um, to give out to you today. Um, we are currently still working on our Alma project and our holding focus groups. Um, we held a focus group yesterday at Dos Pueblos High School, and um, tomorrow with the house, um, the house, the house youth group, the house youth group, um, I believe. I'm not 100% sure on that, um, but we are holding one tomorrow for sure, and we are continuing in the coming weeks, um, continuing to hold focus groups. Um, secondly, we are working with um, City TV um, and helping to produce a um, no smoking uh, commercial or kind of infomercial um, having to do with, uh, as you know, the City Council passed the no smoking ordinance, um, which goes into effect, and we are um, working with City TV uh, to create that ad. Um, and finally, we um, just this just last week had interviews um, for new applicants as we had um, positions to fill. On the youth council, and we are—we've um, concluded our interviews and are now just waiting for the city council, who is going to interview them and um, make decisions on that. Um, and I think that's it. Well, that's great. Thank you. Great. Thank you so Thank much. You. Have a happy holidays. You as well. Bye bye. Um, and that'll bring us to trees. Mr. Downey, see, we're just going to move along and catch up. <laughs> Chair Longstreet and Commissioners, the uh, first item on the agenda is the 100 block of Ortega Street, 634 Anacapa Street. Um, the uh, applicant is requesting removal of the uh, tree just in front of the white truck in this photograph. Um, there is a project moving forward for this property where uh, there will be underground parking and that tree exists in a space that will be the driveway for the uh, underground parking. Um, they are proposing to uh, plant several replacement trees, both on this side and on the Anacapa side of the property. The uh, Street Tree Advisory Committee reviewed the application. Um, their recommendation is to approve the removal on the condition as many street trees as feasible will be planted. Thank you. Are there questions of staff? Yes. No, I would make a motion to concur with the Street Tree Advisory Committee. Is there a second? Second. Okay. We have no public speaker slips for this item. I'll just note that. And um, we have a motion and a second to approve the recommendation. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that passes. Next. <coughs> Chairling Street and Commissioners, uh, 4A2 is 816 West Anapamu Street. Um, there is an olive tree that, uh, unfortunately, its location is, is directly adjacent to another tree. It is not the designated tree for this street, um, and the applicant is requesting uh, removal of the tree because of the mess the olives create on the sidewalk. The Street Tree Advisor Committee reviewed the application and uh, their recommendation is to approve removal on the condition that another tree is planted farther away from this one within the parkway. Um, their 
recommendation is not based on the fact that the olive creates a mess, rather that uh, it is inconsistent with the street tree master plan as far as placement is concerned. Thank you. I'm glad to see that it wasn't about the olives because we'd lose a lot of historic trees um, if we took them down for that reason. Are there questions of staff? Any questions or comments? Okay. Um, I would entertain a motion. Um, yeah, I'll make a motion to, again, concur with the Street Tree Advisory um, Commission for okay. the removal. And the... Um, the a new street tree and on the condition of the replacement tree okay is there a second second okay any discussion all in favor aye aye, aye. opposed abstain okay chair long street and commissioners uh 4b1 is 2507 mesa school lane um the applicant is requesting to remove uh two palms uh, Melaleuca, uh, one yucca, and a small lemon lime tree. Um, the uh, project uh, that necessitates the removal is to address off street parking for the uh, property, um, which requires the driveway be moved over, uh, and these trees are in direct line with the driveway that's proposed. Um, the applicant did look at other options regarding the driveway, but unfortunately, this is the only location available for given the constraints of the building site. So uh, the committee reviewed that. Their recommendation is to approve the removals on their application, uh, and uh, staff supports that recommendation. Okay. Questions or comments? Just item. one question. So there's no um, recommendation for replacement trees? Chair Longstreet and uh, Commissioner Cohen, this, uh, it, these are setback trees. Uh -huh. And uh, the applicant has advised me that they are going to attempt to retain the king palm uh, and relocate it to another location. Uh, and if that won't be successful, they do plan to plant another palm, but the committee did not recommend a condition. Okay, okay thanks for the clarification. Um, I would again make a motion to concur with the Street Tree Advisory's recommendation for the removals. Second. Okay. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. All right. Chair Longstreet and Commissioners, 4B2 is 2433 Kai Soria. Um, you may remember this property. They've had previous applications. Um, as they uh, continue with plans to develop their backyard of their property, that's come to light that. Uh, an additional tree is in the way of a support wall for the slope that uh, retains the, uh, the, the soil adjacent to the public sidewalk. Um, so uh, in order to be able to put this wall in, the tree would have to be removed in addition to the grading that would be required for that action. So the Street Tree Advisory Committee reviewed the materials and uh, did a site visit. They determined that uh, the tree would not be any loss to the community. In fact, uh, it would allow room for adjacent um, coast live oak that's been planted to develop a full canopy. Um, the applicant is proposing to plant a, another tree in that space or similar space. Um, the committee commented that they didn't feel another tree was necessary uh, given the eventual size of the oak. So their recommendation is to approve without conditions. Thank you. Questions or comments? It's good to get the thinking of the Street Tree Advisory Committee on that. Thank you. Um, yeah, um, I now would like to make a motion again to recommend um, that we agree with the Advisory Commission's um, Recommendation for removal. Okay. Second. Okay. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 
Opposed? Okay, passes unanimously. Thank you. Chair Longstreet and Commissioners, uh, in the 1000 block of Coast Village Road, currently there are two species designated. Uh, one is the jacaranda and the second is the uh, Platanus hispanica. The uh, uh, architect, uh, landscape architect for the project adjacent to this area was concerned about the, uh, uh, the way that the uh, Hispanica grows in, in this community. It also uh, tends to hybridize with the native uh, California sycamore you see in this photograph. In this block, the only space large enough for either of those trees is the median. Uh, so any future trees of, of any species would go into the median for a project in this area. Uh, the committee, based on the uh, hybridization of the currently co-designated tree recommends that the Hispanica be removed from the designation and the uh, native California sycamore be placed uh, in its replacement as a co-designated tree for the thousand block of Coast Village Road. Okay, that sounds good. All right, questions of staff or comments? I think it's always good to review these things. Um, do I hear a motion to change the designation in the 1000 block of Coast Village Road? Sure, I'll make the motion. Okay, so we have a motion to um, concur with the Street Tree Advisory Committee Master Plan designation change. Second. All right, motion and a second. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, it passes unanimously. I think we did trees in um, record time tonight, Mr. Downey. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. And that will bring us to the local, po local coastal plan um, land use. And we will go back and finish those other items at the end of our agenda. So, Ms. Zachary, did you want to introduce this item? Chair Longstreet and members of the commission, we have two guests for you um, at this meeting. Uh, staff from the planning division, Deborah Andaloro and Rosie Deisty. Yeah. I always stumble over that. They have been working for a very long time on updates to the coastal land use plan and this is a great opportunity for you to get an introduction. I know Chair Longstreet's been involved in the subcommittee, currently in a public review process and the commission will also have an opportunity after tonight if you so choose to formulate some recommendations or comments to send back to the planning commission and the council which we can do at a, a subsequent meeting perhaps in January or February. And, and I would just say the committee met for three years? Four years, so it just seemed like three. Um, we had rep up, uh, it started with um, Commissioner Wiscom and myself and Commissioner Clark and ended up, um, Commissioner Wiscom switched over to planning but um, was still heavily representing parks, I would say. Her heart is still with us. Um, so we've given a lot of input from the beginning of this from the point of view of um, parks and recreation and what it applies to. So, thanks. So Madam Chair, members of the commission, thanks for taking time and your busy agenda to have us here this evening um, to give you an overview of the draft coastal land use plan, um, which is an important plan for our community and for the city. Um, so doing this outreach is part of our process with coastal planning and it's an com important component of public review so we're really happy to be here today. I just want to mention that um, this plan was done as a, truly as a team effort and so I wanted to mention my team members um, including Deborah Andaloro who's here with me today, Melissa Hetrick who's actually going to be doing the presentation to the Creeks Advisory Committee um, very soon <laughs> tonight. Uh, Tim, Timmy Bolton and Adam Nares, and um, they're all long-range planning staff, and we all work together on this document. 
Um, and we're also grateful to the effort of your subcommittee and the other members of the Planning Commission, Parks and Rec, and Harbor Commission, and staff's involvement and expertise from the Parks and Recreation Department. So um, I just wanted to start with a little bit of background um, about the Coastal Act and why we're here. Um, it started as a Proposition 20 passed by the voters in 1972 and then um, subsequent legislation um, in ending up in the California Coastal Act of 1976. And here, the Coastal Act is a big um, document, but there's some overarching goals uh, listed here. Protect, enhance, and balance the use of coastal resources. Uh, maximize public access to the coast and prioritize coastal dependent and coastal related uses. Um, the Coastal Act author also authorized the development of local coastal programs for local jurisdictions. And this is the standard that's used for coastal development permitting. So the program itself is comprised of two main elements. There's a land use plan, which is what we um, have just released. And that includes land use designations and resource protection policies. And then an implementation plan is the zoning, implementing ordinances and guidelines that um, carry out all the policies in the land use plan. And the dates you see here are the original dates that these two documents were certified for the city of Santa Barbara. Um, I also just wanted a quick slide to show you what the coastal zone is. This is also part of the legislative action. And um, generally, it, it's from the mean high, high tide line to about 1,000 yards inland of the coast. Although um, in rural areas, it can go a lot further in, as much as five miles. But for our city, it roughly follows the blue boundary. Um, it also includes three miles of offshore ocean area. And the city's airport, which isn't shown on this slide, but and that's covered in a separate LCP process. It wasn't part of our long-range planning work effort. So um, why are we updating this local coastal program? Um, like I said, it was originally certified in the early 80s, so it's, it's out of date at this point, and it really needs to be modernized to reflect what's going on now in the city. Also, um, in 2011, we had a general plan adopted by city council, and also in 2017, the new zoning ordinance, but because those haven't been certified by the Coastal Commission, they're not in effect in the coastal zone, so we need to get that moving. Um, we found really importantly that we needed a lot of clarity for complex topics in the city um, to do with development next to um, coastal hazard areas, creeks, sensitive habitat all over the city. There was a need for some clarity. And also we know that sea level rise is happening now and um, we need to start accounting for that and thinking about addressing it. Um, the sooner you address it now, the more you'll be ready for when it gets even worse. So this, this slide shows sort of overall where we're at in this whole process. Um, one thing I didn't mention earlier, there's also what's known as a post-LCP certification permit and appeal jurisdiction map, which is really a coastal commission product, but it shows the coastal zone boundary and some other issues to do with um, coastal development permits and appeal jurisdiction. So that has been a process where the Coastal Commission has been digitizing these maps up and down the coast. And our turn was this year, so that was certified in uh, September of this year. We had a lot of um, consultation with the Coastal Commission staff during this process and, and they certified it. Um, right now we're in the Coastal Land Use Plan update. We also sort of rising from this land use plan update um, we got additional grant money to do a sea level rise adaptation plan, um, which is being initiated right now, and we're, we're looking at consultants for that product. And then early next year, a lower cost overnight accommodation study. These two issues we realized as a city required a lot more staff time, research, study, and outreach before we could just put policies in this plan to implement these two things, so we got that extra money, um, and it'll be a follow-up amendment to the LCP once we have uh, new policies on these issues. And then the new zoning ordinance I mentioned was um, adopted this year by City Council, so that'll be submitted to the Coastal Commission for a LCP amendment next year. 
So um, just to give you an idea of how this process works, um, as I've said, they, all these amendments have to be certified by the Coastal Commission. The consultation process is very long in general for, for almost anything that gets submitted to the Coastal Commission, and in particular, working with our local staff. They wanted really specific and detailed wording for a lot of topics, so we had a lot of back and forth on, on the policies, language, even the text that's in this plan. But after all this work, we've found that the local staff at this point are in general agreement with what, with what we've produced now. There'll be a few lingering issues that we need to work out, but um, they really want to get a approved certified plan out of this recent round of grant monies um, adopted. So hopefully we'll get that done quickly. As part of our um, public outreach process for this um, effort, we also did have a consultant help us um, work on our public outreach products, and we've developed a set of four key messages that I just wanted to go over with you. These messages have kind of um, been the wording we've used in our media releases and on our website, and it's sort of a generally agreed approach for the plan. So the first message is that over the past four years, we've consulted extensively with the Coastal Commission to develop this plan that aligns with the Coastal Act and the local priorities of the city. Second message is that this draft coastal land use plan demonstrates the city's continued commitment to providing access for all to the beach and protection of our natural resources, built environment, and our vibrant public waterfront, all of which makes this community so special. This draft coastal land use plan modernizes the existing 1981 plan, builds upon the 2011 general plan to implement standards that clarify the coastal development review process. And then finally, we know that the coastal zone is important to the economic well-being of our entire community. So next I'm gonna, um, because it's a, it's a fairly detailed document and we really wanted to focus on what's important for your commission, I'll give you a little very brief overview of what's in it and then we'll really um, more detail on the policies that relate to parks and recreation. So in general, the content of the plan carries forward man, many existing policies. I mentioned the 2011 general plans. We folded in as many policy direction from that and even very early general plans moving forward. But these new policies do document the criteria and interpretations that are used today for coastal development permits. They clarify the development standards for really complicated topics, which include coastal bluffs, creeks, environmentally sensitive habitat areas, things like that. And we also address the emerging issue areas like sea level rise. And here I just wanted to sort of remind you, as you know, that parks and recreation are a really important piece of um, the city's coastal stewardship. And we do know, and this is great, that a significant amount of our coastal land is in public ownership. I believe it was 70% of the shoreline is in public ownership. We have complete beach access, and in the California Coastal Trail is complete in the city, and that's great. It's, it's along the beach alignment, and also there's an inland alignment, so when the high tide precludes walking on the narrow beaches, you can go inland. Um, not a lot of communities have a complete coastal trail. Um, there's really ample free and lower cost recreational opportunities in our city and also lots of parking. Um, you know, sometimes on the biggest holidays, the parking's filled, but in most cases you can get a parking spot if you need one. We have a lot of options for getting to the coast um, that are, don't involve a car. There's the shuttles and, you know, lots of sidewalks and bike paths, even the train. And also the parks are fairly well distributed, so there's not an issue of overcrowding in any one location. So all these things really align with the Coastal Act, and you're doing a great job. So um, the first chapter I want to talk about is public access. This is you know, a main tenant of the Coastal Act. And the policies in this chapter really do continue the protection of our existing coastal access areas, including um, the three stairways to the beach and the bluffs and all the other open areas where you can get to the beach. And it also has um, some policies that address possible future needs. Um, the other issue that's really important to the Coastal Commission, I'll just touch on parking for a minute. Um, they really have a strong emphasis on having enough parking for access to the beach. And 
we felt that through our consultation with them and really took a step back and, and worked on what we're calling the key public access parking areas. And those are the um, public parking areas mostly along, right along the waterfront um, or that provide access to some of these bluff stairs that truly act as public access to the beach, the shoreline, the harbor, and Stearns Wharf. So those areas generally are set aside just for public access and, and, and there's not a lot of changes that would be allowed in those areas, um, particularly if there was a significant impact to public access. And what this did is freed up the rest of the coastal zone uh, for a little more flexibility in parking. This is something um, that, say, our transportation division may want to make some changes in the funk zone, for example. And this way, we didn't feel the funk zone was a key public access parking area, um, so they have some policy flexibility to make some changes there, but we're going to preserve all the areas that really provide this public access parking. And then chapter 3.2 is the one that really lists all your recreational facilities and it also includes policies for visitor serving facilities. This chapter also includes, as I mentioned earlier, the overnight accommodations. Um, but in general, the policies protect, encourage, and prioritize coastal recreation. Um, the policies also evaluate new development and redevelopment to prevent impacts to parks and recreation areas. And then, as I mentioned, there's um, a strong interest from the Coastal Commission, again, on overnight accommodations and providing um, lower cost overnight accommodations for people that live inland so they can stay and recreate at the coast. Um, we felt, like I said, we needed some further study of this issue, so we're going to embark on um, hiring a consultant to do a study. We look at all the existing hotels and motels, and even the regional area, like what campgrounds are around, or cabins, things like that, and um, develop some policies that'll help either um, enhance these areas or protect them in some way so that we can provide some of these accommodations. And that would be a future amendment to the LCP. And then the, um, the biological resources chapter is 4.1 and water quality is 4.2. Biological resources chapter is a big um, chapter has a lot of information in it. So I'm just giving you a brief overview. If you're really interested in um, these issues, like I said, we're, we're presenting to the Creeks Advisory Committee and there's staff that's available that can talk to you further about them. But for your brief overview, they provide, um, ESHA is environmentally sensitive habitat areas and creek development standards. So there's definitions of what types of habitats would qualify as ESHA. There's numeric buffers for setbacks from um, creeks and wetlands in ESHA, and a lot of information about allowed uses in those areas. And then the water quality section really supports what the city already does for water quality improvement programs and regulations. Um, another large and detailed chapter is our coastal hazards chapter. Um, there's a couple different sections in this chapter. The hazards, uh, the general hazards, which are like earthquakes and geologic and fire, kind of incorporate the city's um, safety element policies for those issues. But what's um, really new is hazards due to coastal storms and that factor in sea level rise. So this section of this chapter is considered interim until we have this sea level rise adaptation plan complete. So we have some very detailed policies in this section, but they may be modified once we take a closer look at it. Um, and at that time, we'll, we'll see if we need to do any amending. But what this does do is there's six potential shoreline hazard areas that have been outlined and they factor in sea level rise and it provides really detailed development standards for these areas, which includes hazard buffers or other restrictions, a whole list of allowed uses and some policies about um, shoreline and slope protection devices. But specific for your commission, I just wanted to give you sort of an example. Um, so these policies would allow, for example, you see on this picture here, sort of an easily removable recreational um, piece of equipment that's holding, I think, kayaks. So that sort of use would still be allowed and also the uses that are allowed in these 
say beaches areas are consistent with what's in your municipal code now. But if you were looking at a project to say build a brand new restroom, that's when you might want to, um, or you would be required to set it back from hazard areas and consider the life of that restroom and how sea level rise would factor in. So that's, you know, things that are easily removable are in one category and then permanent new equipment would be another. Um, but it, in summary, you know, as I said earlier, we really have a wealth of recreational opportunities for residents and visitors in the coastal zone. And even our Coastal Commission staff that we've been working with have acknowledged that Santa Barbara is sort of a jewel in that regard. Um, and Parks and Recreation is the guardian of these priority resources. Um, again, these, the policies in this plan will allow for continued operations and improvements but existing and new facilities will need to adapt to increase coastal storms and the impacts of sea level rise. Um, now I'm just going to go over a little bit where we are in the process. So we um, had a community open house just this last weekend um, at the Chase Palm Park Center. It um, was very successful, we think. We got about 50 people or so coming in and out. It was very informational. We had a seven or so stations set up and just talked to people and, and told them what's in the plan and gave them uh, cards and stuff on how to stay informed. Um, we're doing these informational meetings and community presentations. I've been lining up some meetings, um, for example, with the um, American Institute of Architects and with the Association of Environmental Professionals. We met with um, some representatives of the Urban Creeks Council Anyone that's interested in the meeting, actually, you can send them to me and I'll, I'll set one up. Um, we have a really good website now and I encourage you to look at it. It has a lot of detail on it. Um, we've been doing media releases and lots of noticing and we're offering Spanish translation as well. So our schedule was, uh, we released the document November 11th. We're looking for public comments between November 11th and January 11th. Um, we're here today for your Parks and Rec Commission and the Creeks Advisory Committee, and then tomorrow we have staff going to the Harbor Commission, and as I said, these uh, to-be-arranged community presentations and staff-led meetings. So the comments that we're getting during this public review period and, and afterwards as well, so if you can't get into us by that date, um, we'll still forward them to the um, Planning Commission for its consideration also. Uh, from, we expect to hear more from Coastal Commission staff. Uh, we're looking to go into the Planning Commission in the spring for their review and recommendation. That would be followed in the spring summer time frame with uh, City Council adoption and then it gets submitted to the Coastal Commission for certification. Once it's submitted to them, the process could take, um, we don't know, six months, a year, we're not quite sure. Um, so to stay informed, again, we encourage you to visit the website. And Deborah has some cards here that have that address on them so you don't have to write it down. Um, we do have this notification list, so if you join that list, you'll get um, email notifications of meetings. And we ask for people's feedback, and we have our phone number. That postcard also has all the different staff that worked on certain sections of the plan. So if you want to ask about a particular thing, they're the staff that know that subject the best. And I'm open for questions. Well, thank you. Um, thank you for all the hard work and your um, perseverance in wordsmithing this document. Because I think um, everybody's on the same page about what they want in the coast. It's the, the words on paper seem to trip everybody up. So thank you for that. To the questions of staff. Any comments? I really do encourage people to um, familiarize yourself with some of the policies and things, because some of this will come before us. I mean, they're yes, Miss Zachary. Yeah. Uh, Chair Longstreet, happy to wait for you to finish no. your comments, but no. I have a few things to add. I I would uh, in your packet, you've been given the three sections that were more specifically mentioned in today's presentation. 
it's actually not that much to absorb. So I really would encourage you to take a little bit time to orient yourself to what is the city's um, coastal area and how does it relate to the, the property and the facilities that we own and manage uh, as parks and recreation. And in fact, um, the planning staff have put together a really good figure. It's figure 3.2-1 don't have a page number uh, but it's called recreation and support facilities in the coastal zone I counted 33 pins and names 29 of those this department's responsible for a couple more of those are on land that zone PR like the Santa Barbara Zoo La Paya Stadium that are city-owned properties and operated by others um, so and when you think about that that's pretty amazing and uh, when, when you think about the vision back in the early 20s, or probably 1900, 1910, we have what we have today because there were people back then that have a vision for the coast to be open to the public and to provide access. And I think that's been carried forward in, in so many ways. And you also have experienced already when we were doing the renovation plan for Cabrillo Pavilion, the hoops we jumped through to do our coastal hazards analysis and what we did to find a way to put a path back in at Shoreline Park. Uh, chances are we'll be continuing to ask many of those questions and coming up with hopefully good answers that allow us access to the coast while the coast is changing. And when we get to the more difficult part, which is the sea level rise aspect, I think this is something that the Commission will want to be actively engaged in because there will be some decisions and opportunities for discussion for what Santa Barbara might look like in a hundred years. And I would also add, we just looked at the bird refuge, and there's another project, I was thinking that. Yeah. yeah, coming forward that um, this document will, you know, pertain to all the decisions that are made. Yeah, I remember talking about it with the Creeks Committee about what can be done to keep more water in the bird refuge, and they were saying, well, a lot of it depends on what we could or couldn't do related to the Coastal Commission plans for development. And I think it is considered an environmentally sensitive habitat area, and so there's even more special things. And so they were really vague about what <laughs> can be done because they were kind of waiting for this. I think um, the policies in this to come out as a guideline for designing the future. So, thank you. And our, yes, Commissioner. I have, I have a question. Um, thank you for your work, first off. And I've been hearing from people with disabilities and adults that often can they just get like, to take their car and park by the beach and they're being told by parking officials that they need to pay for parking by the beach and sitting in their car and in other communities they can do it for free, so I'm just wondering what the plan says about people bringing about cities charging people just to sit in their car and watch the sun go down. Thank you. It, that is in the Harbor Commission, right? The, uh, yeah, the parking and um, yeah. I. I do need an end, so I just would bring it up as something to consider, like having like a place on the coast where people could sit and. Maybe for like an hour or two, not be charged for parking as 
they said in the call one of my friend was saying that communities get put by many don't require people to pay when they sit in the car at the beach. But my friend have been told they need to pay. Okay. I think that parking down in that area, um, I would hope the accessibility um, committee, and I saw your interview yesterday for that one to be on both, um, should probably approach the harbor uh, waterfront parking, because I think it is an issue of accessibility. Chair Longstreet, Commissioner Buxton, um, the, I believe where Commissioner Buxton is referring to are the key, one of the key public parking areas that we've identified there the restrictions on parking going forward in the future changes that would be made they would have to it would have to demonstrate there there wouldn't be a significant uh, impact to coastal access and I think one of the things would be whether or not we are excluding some of our community from utilizing those areas and we could definitely look at the policies and make sure that we've been clear enough about access for all to the coast. Um, the time limits that the waterfront department establishes for parking, however, at this point, um, we have not been involved at all in that process. So um, it, Thank you. it's out of our hands. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? So what I would encourage our commissioners to do is um, familiar, familiarize yourself with this document. And if there's comments or questions, we will have it on our agenda in maybe January a, a, for a brief discussion and um, formulate our recommendations at that point and forward them on to staff. Okay. Thank you very much. Off to Creeks. And, um, oh, that's my copy. Oh, boy. These are the postcards with our staff Many trees have died for this document. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tree, Tree Advisory Committee. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. And that brings us to our next item, which we are going to move now to um, item seven, the advisory committee appointments. Um, we will just start at the top and go down. Do we have um, Joanne Payne here? And all, just a brief statement about why you want to serve. Um, we may or may not have questions. Come on up to the podium here. And um, tell us what your involvement's been and, you know. So I've what? been um, a member of the EWGA, uh, which is um, why I'm here, um, to represent them at the advisory committee. I've been on the board for six years, and I've been involved in the communications and marketing. And I feel that I could be a very good representative. I play at Muni, um, the municipal course. Uh, Santa Barbara Golf Club um, on a regular basis and the EWGA play there at least once a month. We hold all our, of our events there and um, have a very close association with the new um, um, uh, people that are running. Uh, Muni Course now. Yeah, yeah uh, Randy, um, who's I think done a great job and we're loving the new system. And um, I'm replacing somebody called Gretchen, Gretchen Osigen and I'm a very close friend of hers, and she thought I would be a good candidate to come forward, and everybody at the board of the EWGA are really keen that I um, get accepted, but um, I, I just feel that, um, you know, I'm a great communicator and networker for my job. I'm a um, president of my own company, which is called Footle Entertainment, and we executive produce and sell children's uh, television programming all over the world, and I'm also senior VP of a company in LA where I'm heading their sales. So 
love to network and love to get people on the golf course and uh, also appreciate everything that Muni does for us. So, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You have some big shoes to fill for Gretchen. Yeah, I she know. Is. I yeah. know. Definitely, yeah. But she's a very close friend. So um, She's yeah. been a great asset yeah, to that committee. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you. Do you have any, does the commission have any questions? Um, I would entertain a motion. We have one applicant for this position. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to appoint her. Is that yeah, right? Yes, to appoint Ms. <laughs> to Payne. To accept her appointment, <laughs> application for appointment. To the, to the Golf Advisory Committee. Is there a second? Second. Thanks all righty. So thank you. And all in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank thank you. you. Welcome I'm aboard. Looking forward to the opportunity. Yeah. Good. Thank you for serving. Okay, next we come to the Street Tree Advisory Committee. And our first applicant for a Santa Barbara City resident is Desmond O'Neill. Um, thank you very much. Des was on the commission when I first joined and uh, taught me the ropes here. So. Actually, there was a flashback when you started talking about the bird refuge. <laughs> as long Some as things. I was on the commission, every summer that came up. <laughs> uh, Some things don't change, do they? <laughs> and may never. Yeah. <laughs> uh, don't anyway. say that. Well. We've tried various solutions, and uh, so far, as far as I know, none has been significantly successful. Well, stay tuned for the next We just one. live with it. Anyway, uh, I'm applying for reappointment to the uh, Street Tree Advisory Committee. Uh, I was uh, a member of the Parks and Recreation Commission between 1982 and 1994 and served as chair uh, several times. Uh, I started uh, going along with the Street Tree Advisory Committee meetings at the request of several members. In those days, we had two members of the Street uh, of the uh, Parks and Recreation Commission who were regular members of the Street Tree Advisory, uh, Bruce Van Dyke and Dick Raffaro. And they invited me to come along, so I did. And, uh, after I went off the commission, uh, there was a hiatus, and then I think we've established that I came back on the Street Tree Advisory uh, uh, Committee in uh, 2010. Uh, I think I've served two terms now, okay. and I'm, I'm applying for reappointment. Uh, I know a lot more about trees than I did when I started out, and I've uh, acquired a considerable library uh, I think uh, I think I've been a reasonably good member of the uh, committee. Uh, I always, well, a lot of the time I make the motions, uh, but uh, I also have uh, developed a certain expertise in parliamentary procedure in the van as we go around. <laughs> so anyway, there it is. Uh, if Thank you me. have any questions, I'll be delighted to answer. Questions them. for Mr. O'Neill. We know he's a loyal participant in our Street Tree Advisory Committee, and we appreciate and big, your work. And a big tree hugger. Yeah, um, I just wanted to say thank you for your service. I think it's a valuable asset to the committee to have such a longstanding member who understands the And it's a lot of fun, community. too. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons I keep going. Okay. My colleagues are wonderful people, and uh, it's, a, it's a great experience. Every month we get in that van and go around and... Uh, it's oh, we appreciate your recommendations. Yeah. That's for thank that's you. for sure. Um, is there questions? a motion? Yeah, I will make the motion to uh, reappoint Mr. O'Neill to well, the Street Tree Advisory Committee. I think you have to hear all the applicants. Well, you're filling a category, and you're the only applicant for a city resident, and our other two are in another oh, that's, category. That's right. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> See, I see, learned. See, you taught me. <laughs> parliamentary procedure. Thank I you. I know how to do this now. <laughs> With that, I'll second it. Okay. Thank you, Roger. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you. Okay, and now we have two applicants for non-resident, and we have two positions open for non-resident also. So, um the competition isn't too stiff right now. We appreciate your service. Um, Bruce Reed. Hi, folks. Hello. Welcome. And you've been serving. 
Uh, yeah, I've served for the last uh, year, I guess. Uh, forgive me, I'm uh, under the weather. I think the last year that I came and interviewed, I was also uh, having a cold, so forgive me if my voice breaks. <laughs> oh, we're making you sick. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, already with me, no worries. Uh, but yeah, I'm a horticulturalist up at the Santa Barbara Botanic Garden and have been serving on the Street Tree Committee for uh, about the last year. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And we really do appreciate the expertise that you and Mr. McPherson bring to the committee, it it's, guides us in the decisions that we make. So thank you very much. Are there questions of uh, Mr. Reed? Okay, well, well, we'll do the motions all at once. Mr. McPherson, come on up. Greetings, all. Good evening. So tell us, why do you want to come back? Um, first of all, I love trees, but also um, I really enjoy the um, kind of interface between homeowners' needs and desires and the city's, the city need for a, a viable um, urban forest. And it's a tricky interface sometimes, but I, um, <clears throat> I, I think I'm qualified, along with some really wonderful other people on the committee, to um, deal with these these questions and um, love to serve another term. Uh, I did want to say, <laughs> I don't know how many years I've been on this committee, really enjoyed it. Um, but I did um, originally, I think Bruce Van Dyke invited me, um, used to just drive around as a non-elected person when Dan Condon was doing the route. And, uh, of course, in those days, we'd stop at a coffee shop. I was going to say it involved coffees and donuts, yeah. <laughs> I thought, as I recall. <laughs> we, don't, we don't get that with, with Mr. Downey, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, um, and it is a great opportunity to just be driven around and see this beautiful city. It is really marvelous. When, and sometimes I, I compare it with some of the other towns up and down the coast that don't have the lushness that we have and the wonderful diversity and attention to... Uh, the need for trees. Oh my gosh, I could go on forever. Well, I, I would like to say I appreciate the fact that you come and give us your opinion when it's um, maybe a, a more controversial item. I do appreciate that a lot. So thank you for um, showing up at the meeting. It's a little extra time, but um, hearing your opinion is helpful. And yes, funny. nice working with you all. Um, I don't see you, but I know you're back there <laughs> yeah. making judgments. Well, thank you. Um, get to the questions of Mr. McPherson. No? Okay, well, we have two applicants for two positions. So um, would we like to appoint them both? And I would entertain a motion to that. Yes, I'll make the motion <laughs> to, um, yeah. Reappoint both Mr. Reed and Mr. McPherson to the Street Trade Advisory Committee. Second? Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you both. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, and now we are to our next appointments. It's the Integrated Pest Management Advisory Committee, and our first. Um, we have four vacancies and we have two applicants for our community at large position. So Greg Chittick, who has been <clears throat> with us, I think, since the beginning, right? I think I was sitting up Correct. here and you were down there yes. telling us what we needed to do and we did it. Yes, and it's been a good project and I've really enjoyed being on the committee and working with staff and uh, toxicity and chemicals is, is part of my profession as well. So, um, so it fits in well and it was great to work to lower the toxicity exposure for my kids as well as the members of the community. So I'd like to continue. Thank you. Are there questions, Mr. Chittick? Thank you. Thanks. And next will be Kristen Labont, Labonte. 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 Good evening, okay. Commissioners. Welcome. And you're reapplying you. too. I am. Yeah. This is my 11th year on the committee. And so I've been very pleased to be able to help uh, reduce toxins in the environment uh, for the public of Santa Barbara 
in the areas surrounding, including places like the airport and um, the golf course. And um, I'm a librarian at UC Santa Barbara in biology and environmental science, so I have a research background to help out with the committee. And I really like working with staff and the committee, so I'd like to continue. Great. We really appreciate your service on this committee. Um, are there questions of Ms. Labonte? Then um, I would entertain a motion to appoint um, Greg Chittick and Kristen Labonte. So moved. Uh, no, come on, you can do this. I'd make the motion to appoint the two candidates. Okay, so our second. Thank you. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Welcome. Thank you again for all your years of service. Um, I don't see Mr. Saltzman, but um, we may put that off. Chair, Chair Longstreet, Commissioners, um, Mr. Saltzman was unable to attend tonight, so okay. he will come back at another meeting. All righty. Well, thank you. We um, completed that, and now we will go back to our agenda and pick up all the pieces we missed. Um, let's go back to the beginning. Um, we need. To, do, we don't have any written communications, do we? So. Um, Commissioner Committee Assignment Reports. Um, Mr. Perry, we'll start with you. Do you have anything to report? I did attend the uh, Arts and Crafts again last night, and they're moving along fine. They're a little thin on their show attendees, but they are doing what they can to solve it. Their numbers down are of artists. Yeah, oh, oh, of participants in the program. Okay. Correct. Hopefully that'll get better as the construction has wrapped up a bit and maybe there'll be more attractions down on lower state now that is the optimism well we'll hold on to that um miss cohen yeah uh i think that i missed the creeks meeting last month i was out of town either i missed it or they canceled it i honestly cannot remember um, but I was out of town for two weeks and then it's tonight right now is the other one and I uh, was going to try to go over there after this so I can report back next time on a little bit more detail about the um, the water related parts of the land use coastal land use uh, project that we just heard about so thank you Commissioner Lesnar Buxton I attended the neighborhood in Advisory committee is was good. I got a strategic planning for 2018 and some good ideas on how to get the committee more organized and good conversation. Thank you. Um, I also attended that meeting and. I think it was one of the most productive uh, retreat type meetings at planning meetings that we've had and uh, looking at a new structure for reporting both um, areas of concern and then receiving information back and also um, having more contact with staff in other departments because many of the issues although um, the uh, neighborhood advisory council <clears throat> sits under the Parks and Recreation Department, I would say um, most of the issues that concern the residents of the neighborhoods are traffic and lighting and fall under other departments. So um, it, it was a really good look at what we were trying to accomplish and how to best do that. So that was great. I also attended the um, Coastal Plan meeting, the open house on Saturday, um, and it, I would recommend there's a program that I heard you can get on your, you can use on your computer about sea level rise that is um, pretty fascinating, and it's Cosmos. So I would encourage you to look at it, probably a little scary, but um, that, that was an interesting thing to learn about. And then yesterday I attended the city council meeting for um, the Cabrillo Arts uh, um, the, the construction bids, the award of the bids. God, it just went right out of my head. All right. 
Commission and staff communications. None of we have any ceremonial items. Chair Longstreet, members of the commission, I would like to let you know that George Thompson, who is currently the capital project supervisor in Parks and Recreation, uh, was recognized for 10 years of service to the city. Uh, Chair Longstreet will remember that he started out in the Creeks Division as a Creeks planner, and he's moved over to the general fund area of the department and uh, has been doing a great job um, working with staff and consultants in moving projects forward. Excellent. Congratulations. All right. That brings us to our consent items. Um, summary of council actions. Um, Ms. Zachary, did you have anything you wanted to add to these? Uh, any questions for staff about? I think you, you see that the campaign is moving forward and is getting some guidelines and hopefully someone will want something named after them for a, a small donation. And that brings us to the minutes. We received them in our packet. Are there any changes or corrections? No, I make a motion to waive the reading and approve the minutes. Okay, is there a second? Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Aye. Okay, one abstention, so that passes. And director's report. He has to vote, okay. Um, you know what I just realized too? I wasn't at the last meeting, so am I allowed to make that motion? <laughs> Yes. Chair Longstreet and Commissioners, if, even if you were not at the meeting, you can okay. still vote on the minutes. Okay. 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 So, so we're unanimous now? Yeah. Okay. That <laughs> passes unanimously. There we go. Oh, we dodged a bullet on that one. Um, and that brings us to the director's report. Chair Longstreet and Commissioners, it, it really is focused on the Cabrillo Pavilion. You continue to get updates from staff at these meetings via email um, as we move forward uh, with the project. I, I briefly would share with you, as you know, as you, one can imagine, this project has many moving parts. And it has been a labor of love for the department and the commission and council for a number of years. Uh, we're by no means at the finish line, but we passed a major hurdle yesterday at city council when they approved the construction contract. Uh, that contract uh, is for more money than we anticipated it would cost to complete the project. However, uh, through the staff analysis and speaking with the contractors and considering all of the variables and issues involved uh, made the recommendation to go ahead and move forward. And Diani Building Corporation, which is a local company, uh, uh, was awarded the contract by council yesterday. That, that gets us to January, but between now and January, we have a lot of things to do. We have a number of staff and a lot of stuff in the building that needs to move out, and so we're in the process of doing that. Uh, we've been working on a relocation plan for our staff, trying to figure out the best place for folks to go, knowing that in some cases people are going to double up a little bit for a while because we don't only have so much office space to go around. So the aquatic staff will be moving to Los Banos, aquatic staff that are at, at uh, the pavilion, and um, that provides opportunities as well for us in terms of synergy with that work group. And then the upstairs staff will be moving to the Davis Center. And so they will be um, using that space as a workplace. Uh, we've had some changes in our neighborhood and outreach services section. So some of the staff from the, who actually work in neighborhood and outreach services are going to move to the West Side Center. So we're doing a bit of musical chairs, but we found a good place for everybody to go. While the project is under construction, we're hopefully looking at an 18-month window, so we're only closed for one summer season. We are working through uh, how to uh, accommodate our programs next summer while the building's closed and really looking at trying to keep as much on East Beach as possible. The more activity, the more opportunity for people to continue to go to the beach, the better it is to ensure that it's usable for the public and, and we have the right kind of activity down there. 
Uh, project construction, I, I mentioned. If you've been by the pavilion lately, you'll notice that the lanes have been closed off for a while. Well, Southern California Edison is relocating 400 feet of high pressure gas line from the park property into the street. And uh, that project's been progressing really well. We've worked with the uh, adjacent hotel owners that received the greatest impact um, from the project to try to minimize noise. And we're hopeful that that work will be completed fairly soon so that when the, our construction contractor begins, there's no conflict between the two activities. So we're pleased that that's moving forward well. It took, it's taken a little bit of planning. Uh, and there is some inconvenience, we realize. But ultimately, it will move and it will be in the street forever. And we won't have to deal with it ever again. So it's worth, worth the upfront investment. And then to the to the capital campaign, as you saw, council approved the naming opportunities and the guidelines uh, for moving forward with the campaign. We have a solid campaign cabinet, so a leadership team that's met twice and is moving forward with seeking out both foundation and uh, private prospects for the for the project. We are. Uh, developing the outreach materials, our logo, our tagline, and I will have a, a multi-page brochure to share with you, something just for your information that will be used as part of the campaign. We held a community leaders breakfast a couple of weeks ago, and uh, Chair Longstreet attended that, and that was an opportunity to introduce new people to the project, uh, to talk about what we want to do, why we want to do it, and the need for the campaign, and that was well received. Between now and the end of the year, we're taking any and every opportunity to provide tours uh, to folks, both community building and obviously campaign building. So once the building's closed, there will be a period where access probably won't be that easy. We're hoping that at some point during construction, there'll be the opportunity for hard hat tours, but we don't have any of that information yet. So our idea is the more we can um, bring people into the building and particularly take them downstairs because that really tells the greatest story about why it's it's really needed. Uh, that'll help us move forward with the campaign. So if you think of, of groups and individuals that you believe would be influential and interested, uh, feel free to reach out to me. And I would just close with a number of staff in our department have been very involved in this project for many, many years. Rich Hanna, Justin Van Mullum, George Thompson. The staff at the pavilion in the bathhouse have been on the front lines as we've moved forward with this project. We've also worked really closely with public works staff, uh, Mike Wilshire and Brad Klingzinger. Klingzinger, I think I got that right. And they've been super to work with. And obviously, KBZ Architects is our design firm, and they have a team of engineers and specialists that have been involved. And as I said, it's been a tremendous amount of work over the past number of years. Uh, I think uh, we feel very confident that uh, we have a really great project. And knock on wood, when it's done, um, we want to bring the tens of thousands of people back that showed up the first day it was open back in 1927. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. I have a question. Is City TV going down? and documenting the building now? Because it seems to me that's a huge city TV story and we need before and after. Chair Longstreet, members of the commission, we, we have footage that city TV's, TV has um, taken in the past. We did a video a few years ago and it's on my to-do list. Uh, to check in with them now that we know it's a go. I mean, we've been sitting on the edge of our seat for a number of months mm -hmm. uh, thinking, do we or don't we have a project? So we do have some historical information and an opportunity to do more. And I would also say that um, one of our campaign cabinet members, Herb Barthels, his daughter, uh, Patty Gutschall, who's a photographer, has been down there, and she has taken some fantastic photos capturing both the romance of the building and then the not so romantic part of the building. And I anticipate we will have a very good story to tell between her work and City TV's work. Sort of the why, because once it's closed, people might be like, why? And I was like, well, we can show you why. Just sit here for five minutes and yeah. we'll give you a picture. And I think it would be interesting during this period of time um, to have on the City TV show that 
people watch some progress reports and it might help with fundraising in, uh, in that way that people see what the needs are and then what, you know. Thank I you. know it's been out and around, but it's a great I'd like idea. to see it. And since City TV is watching right now, maybe <laughs> they'll work this into the schedule. Thank you. Are there other questions of Ms. Zachary? Yes. Any thoughts of putting up a sign saying coming in 2019 with the new illustrations of the full plan on East Beach by the Pavilion just some people have a sense who are walking by the woods happening? Chair Longstreet and Commissioner Lesnar Buxton, yes, that's the short answer to your question. Uh, there will be construction fencing and we plan to have information about the project and when it, we plan to reopen it and then the benefits that it'll, it'll provide to the community. So people will be able to see that uh, over time. It's very exciting. Uh, congratulations to all the staff for um, just making it over this hurdle because it was a big one and um, I think we all knew there were going to be these bumps in the road like the, the bids coming in higher. We just knew it. Um, it happens every time. And there's no way around it because we don't control the environment those bits come in, but I, I'm really pleased that we're moving forward. It'll be exciting. A couple of years we'll be there for the grand opening. So thank you for all your hard work on that one. Um, is there any, no further business of the Parks and Recreation Commission? I believe this meeting is adjourned. And I'd like to say happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Have a safe and happy holiday.